coming up. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Drugs on the move. Motoring on at nearly 105 in with our behind it. Cross county road trips. There's a large quantity of drugs being transported through North Yorkshire to the music festival in Manchester. Force officers into action. Open the door now! Get out! Close your out. Hands, go, go, no. And a reckless drug dealer. It's been driving at speed on the wrong side of the carriage with driving like an idiot. Doing all he can to avoid arrest. Approaching a red ATS, stand by. I'll have some cameras. Okay. Can you just look at the Mercedes outside McDonald's and tell me which way it goes? Yes, sir. Halfway through a busy day shift, Traffic Sergeant Julian Pearson is on the lookout for suspicious vehicles. I generally have a bit of a roving patrol, listen to what's going on with the other traffic boys and girls. I'm on the lookout for vehicles coming in from Leeds and Bradford into Harrogate, particularly linked to what we call county lines. Force control monitors a suspect motorbike rider on CCTV. Yeah, you're wearing this uh, motorbike film to stop. It's been driving at speed on the wrong side of the carriage with narrowly missing pedestrians. Drive like an idiot. The rider makes off from another officer minutes away from Julian. Cameras, which way is he going? Straight on towards the principal's roundabout. Yes, yeah, sure, I'm behind him. Yes, yeah, approaching the uh, roundabout now. There's two males on a motorbike with the learner plates. You're not allowed to have a passenger on the learner plates. But by failing to stop, makes me think there is more to it than they're not insured or don't have an MOT. Motorbike travels the wrong way around the roundabout into opposing traffic and across the stray. I missed him by a whisker. Received. He's come out down there, hasn't he? Because I was coming up the back of here. From my gut feeling, this motorbike is being used for criminal purposes, which I strongly suspect is drugs. Criminals will target affluent areas like Harrogate to bring in drugs. Young people from potentially poor or vulnerable backgrounds are used to traffic those drugs, and that's what's called county lines. Bit of a bugger. I don't like to have unfinished business. We've just come up, back up Dragon, just in case he's coming back, like, done a bit of a loop. Yeah. Losing track of the suspect, Julian alerts the rest of his team. Checks are then done on the registered keeper on our intelligence system. The motorbike is registered to somebody from the Leeds area. Whatever they've come to Harrogate for has probably been thwarted. So I then draft in two of my colleagues to sit at static points waiting for the motorbike to return back towards Leeds. Two XN, speed is five zero. So left, left, left towards Harewood. There's been a yet sighting. Five, five, seven, where do I need to be? We are on Dunkswick Lane. We're over the level crossing. Yeah, keep us posted, I'm on my way. It's now one up. The driver is wearing a helmet. He's aware I'm here. Now it's missing its passenger. Let's see if I can uh, get more ID on him. He's recorded on me. I've got a photograph. I'll send it to you in a moment. Thank you. So you have to take your body cameras. Yes, yes. We're now it's a right right onto the A61 towards Lee. Speed five zero. Hello. 
doing the checks on the register keeper, this particular person is very well recorded with the links to drugs, firearms, links to a shooting, some very serious offences, which means that we have to put every effort into stopping that motorbike. As Julian races to catch up... I'll tell you how far I am behind if I'm nowhere near. Another traffic cop joins the lead car behind the runaway rider. Car two permission. Go ahead. Just confirm I'm car two behind you. Yes, yes, received. As the rider's accelerating through on the A61 to Leeds, he's increasing the risk to us, he's increasing the risk to himself and members of the public. It's offside, offside at the ATS. He's constantly upping the ante by performing overtakes into oncoming vehicles. I would put this now to high risk. In the hope that at some point, somebody somewhere is going to say, abort it, stop. Yes, yes, if you want to drop back, Chris, and try a, a quick get by. Yes, yes. I'll try and do a get by and see if I can get a stinger out at the grammar school. So at the same time, I'm talking to NPAS, the National Police Air Service. That's received, NPAS, seven minutes ETA. 10 5 5, still A61 towards Leeds. 5 2, the hope just been for, I have gone ahead. I am going to try and see if I can make some ground and, and get a stinger out. Received. The shoot to 149, let me know when you're in position and where. Yes, yes, will do. Shoot to XM, we've entered the 30s. Speed five zero. One four nine. I'm going to go for the stinger um, on the exit of the roundabout for the sixty one. Shoot, that's received. Come on, Chris. We need that stinger. He's on the roundabout. As the rider leaves the roundabout, he spots the stinger. He's on the pavement. He's back on the road, the A61 towards Leeds, approaching a red ATS. Stand by. He's wrong side of the dual carriageway. Pursuit to exit and I'm abandoning it. Riding dangerously, riding on the wrong side of the road, they would expect the police to abort the pursuit because the risk is then high. The best way of dealing with anything like that is with a helicopter. Head past three, we're just coming on scene now. We got it on camera. We are recording. Yes, yeah, still on the wrong side of the carriageway, heading towards Leeds A61. Wrong side of the carriageway, narrow and missing pedestrians. It's up to the path now. Still generally heading in the direction of Leeds, straight across the second second exit, wrong side of the carriageway on the path, passing the uh, garage. He probably thinks he's reasonably successful because we've dropped back, he can't see us anymore. He won't be able to hear the helicopter because traffic is relatively busy. It's a continuation down onto Shaw Lane. At this point, I can't see it, and I'm relying on the helicopter to direct us in. Yeah, he's onto the roundabout, the uh, rock side of the carriageway. He's returning, I think, to somewhere that he knows where he can hide, blend in to a place that he feels safe. He has gone into a heavy residential area. He's going to uh, keep an eye on him just in case he, uh, he gets off the bike and makes up on foot. And pass me one of this male's off this bike now, if anybody's in the area. Male, dark blue, large jacket with a hood, black trainers, I think the black jeans. Get units that location, I'll be able to guide you in. Yeah, we've got them making towards. Yeah, he's just gone into hairdressers. Got a marked unit just coming round, it's going to be on your left hand side. This male might change his clothing, he had black trainers, dark blue, black hooded top and a uh, light black jacket. A plainclothes drug unit from North Yorkshire Police move in for an arrest. Yeah, turn left there, turn left there, if you can. Meanwhile, Julian's directed towards his abandoned motorbike. The one that's failed to stop. Parked upon somebody's drive, alongside the motorbike is 
his helmet, which is just laid on the ground. One up, we'll get some gloves and have a look. Can you come out of that driveway, please, and turn left on foot? Keep walking, there's a, a black garage door, the word boss are written in graffiti. Um, just to the left hand side of that door, as you look at it, there's something red on the floor. Yeah, that's his motorcycle gloves, I'll recover those. Lovely, and um, thank you ever so much for your help, it's much appreciated. Yeah, we're looking at it now, it does appear to uh, look like the uh, male that we followed. And uh, the way that he's walking, it's quite distinctive. The rider turned out to be the keeper of the motorbike. Obviously, denying any knowledge of the incident. Unfortunately for him, he still had his mobile device, which obviously then helps us track his movements and then links him back to the motorbike, which links him back to the helmet, which links him back to the gloves. Yep. So the picture's looking very bleak for him and very positive for us. Coming up... Yeah, that's it. More county line suspects. Motoring on at nearly 105 in with a marked traffic car behind it. Caught on the move. Open the door now! Get out, Close your hands, out. Get out the now! And under arrest. On suspicion of possession with intent to supply, Class A. Let's go. Some short ass has been driving this. Not guilty. Not this time. Not today. I even moved your seat back for yesterday. You did. Heading out to patrol the Yorkshire Dales is Sergeant Pete Stringer and trainee Kyle McBride. So it's Kyle's second day on attachment. He's got three weeks with us. He's going to work with different people to see different styles in different areas, which I think is important. So I'm hoping today is uh, another good day and we get a chance to, to get involved in, in some decent jobs, learn something new. I'm just trying to identify some other offences that we didn't look at yesterday. Just see what the day turns up, really. It'll be a beautiful day, isn't it? Go ahead. Just got some intel from Cleveland that's got a large quantity of drugs. Come on, firm it's southbound, believe it's got product on board, yeah? Confirmation southbound and it's got product on board from Cleveland. The information is that there's a large quantity of drugs being transported through North Yorkshire to the music festival in Manchester this weekend. North Yorkshire's roads are often used to move drugs between counties across the northeast. It surprises me still that people think that North Yorkshire is a little bit like heartbeat, that the police aren't on the ball and we don't have the technology. Sometimes the crews that come over are surprised. We're onto them, we know the vehicles, we know where they've been. Um, Just been asked by Cleveland Police to offer some support to them. Yes, yes, uh, you'll have three Mark T pack units very shortly and then two plane cars that can act as spotters not really bothered which police officer and which county stops this vehicle. It's about taking the drugs out of circulation and hopefully getting some people arrested. It's a challenge which I relish to take drugs off the road, to, to target these drug dealers. Can't stand them. They ruin people's lives. Communities can be absolutely ravaged by drugs, so I have no tolerance for drug dealers at all. Up 1640, are we getting any kind of updates from Cleveland as to where it currently is, etc? Possible sighting. So it's now coming into North Yorkshire's area. So we're just trying to get plotted up and wait for that. Five traffic cars are closing in on the suspect vehicle. 1640 of a mapping with static. The Tiguan's moving at fair speed now, so we're just trying to keep a little bit out of sight so that the subject vehicle can come past us and then we can drop in behind. Mr. Mayor, I thought we had more time than we suggested. Possible sign lane to right. pass the mayor by. Stand by.
Oscar Romeo 6-3, we have visual on the vehicle. It's lane two, A19 southbound, speed 8-0, lane two of two. Looks like three adult males that I saw. Extensive near side accident damage, looks fairly recent, so. Yeah, vehicle's continuing. We've sat uh, lane two, speed 9-6-96. Pete's plan is to surround the suspect car and bring it to a stop. 694 on 13, I've got you two behind me. Vehicle's directly in front of me, motoring on at uh, nearly 105, even with a marked traffic car behind it. Vehicle's continuing, A19 southbound, speed in excess of 9-0. We do have three uh, suitably trained vehicles with it now. Box is going on. Bring it down, bring it down. Stop, stop, stop. Open the door! Open the door now! Get out, Close your out. Skeleton, no. out. Open it's the door. Out. It's you shouldn't have. No, you're the way we can right, see him. There. Stop there. everything. Oh, yeah, all right, man. And then back, drop that, put it on the floor. Stay there. Place your hands behind your back. Been detained for a cert. Shut up, lad. Stand there. Yeah, Put your hands out. Put your hands out, please. Put your hand out. Do you have anything on you or in the vehicle that you shouldn't have? No, I haven't. Is there anything in the vehicle that you shouldn't have? Now's no. the time to tell me. No. Right, is it on you or is it on one of your passengers? No. No? No. We will find it. We're looking for drugs. The information is that's within that vehicle. Before I search you or the car, is there anything you want to tell me? No? Champion. Ross, can you watch this, lad? Up 1640, any chance of a uh, person has to yell? Driver of the. Uh, Take what? Yeah, I don't know if there's loads of stuff in front of me. That's in the front wheel. Right. In bank full of stuff. Sergeant Tim Wilson arrives to help Pete with the search. The reality is, if we take an organised crime group out and we put them in prison, somebody will step into their shoes and begin again tomorrow. Just think we can do the best we can do to make it difficult for them and take out as much as we can. Checks on the driver reveal more intel. 1540, he does have a marker. He uh, has current bail conditions. He's uh, on pre charge police bail due back at uh, Cleveland Police Station on the 3rd of May, and he's got two previous arrests on record. Pete moves everyone away from the roadside to search the cars. We need certain amounts of evidence to get somebody convicted for the supply and the drugs. So, yeah, every time they come through, we've got an opportunity to search them, to search the vehicle. There's no better feeling than getting somebody stopped with a quantity of drugs. That obviously makes the conviction a lot easier. Clear the carriageway, yeah? Yes, yes, we are. We're just on a farm track just off the uh, A19. Has he got anything local for a, a cannabis warning? It's got a small amount of cannabis on him. Are you all right with him, Nick? Yeah, he's got about 50 quid in cash. Yeah. Some small measuring spoons. Apparently they're gifts for his nieces. Yeah, of course they are. Yeah. Just in there for now. Right, hook it up. Oh, I've got to find something in this, surely. Unknown male picked up. Yeah. They were returning to Manchester where they were doing it. It's just the way they go to. Right. Good. Oh, it's in there somewhere, isn't it? Working with other forces and the neighbouring forces is really important and then that information is shared and then we work together to tackle it. So, for instance, we got the information in relation to this vehicle travelling from Cleveland seen in suspicious circumstances. Pub 1640, was uh, dog unit coming here? So you start searching the vehicle. No dog unit uh, coming to you, yeah. That's perfect, thank you. Yeah, it's a lot of ease, isn't it? It's 
all mounting up. He is. Nitrous oxide. It is an offence to sell it. There's a lot here. I've never seen this one. The suspicion is that they were going to sell that for people to inhale at the music festival in Manchester. Nitrous oxide, or laughing gas, is now the UK's second most used drug by 16 to 24-year-olds. Supply can carry a seven-year jail sentence. I haven't seen out like this. Christ. All of this. Yep. The dog officer and uh, his trusted companion have found a large quantity of tablets uh, just on the initial search of the personal possessions. So, uh, at the moment, it's looking fairly promising. The intelligence that we've been given was quite specific about who was in the vehicle, where they're going, and what they could be carrying. So, I'm hopeful there's still some more to be found. Okay, we haven't found that yet. <laughs> Good course, yeah, tell you, you don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence you don't mention one question. Something which later in court, anything you do, say, may be given in evidence. Where they're under arrest, OK, on suspicion of possession, with intent to supply, controlled with Class A. You're obviously under arrest on suspicion of possession with intent to supply, Class A. Number 16, 14, we've got five under arrest at this location for Peewitz. Just confirming Harrogate custody, are aware that there will be five coming. Over. They will be. I'm wanting them separate. Oh, as you're travelling up, they're trained to search to a, a different level to us. There's a couple of points of interest that the dog's indicating on, but um, nothing that we've found in addition to the uh, the bag of pills and tablets so far. Meanwhile, we're going to get the five prisoners booked in at Harrogate. So the circumstances are information received from colleagues at Cleveland Police that a gravy W Tig one would be transporting a substantial quantity of Class A preemptively stopped and all five males in the vehicle have been searched and a quantity of Class A found. You and all your friends have been arrested on suspicion of possession of Class A drugs with intent to supply. OK, do you understand that? So in this cigarette packet, we found three bags. It does look like cocaine, but feel it. Like, just feel how hard it is. It's probably crack. OK. So in here we have, it's hard to see, but I think they're probably skulls. I'd say they're MDMA. Right. What sort of value are we talking on the MDMA then? Um, we've probably got about £2,000 worth here, street value. Okay. The information we have is there's about £10,000 altogether. So. Brilliant. And they're still searching the, the vehicle? Yeah. Right. I have heard that they have found something. Great. Because of the nature of the events, the officers have approached me, asking for authority to carry out a strip search, OK? So I'm going to authorise that. Seven. What is worth? Some are quite adept at, at hiding drugs, They're either in the vehicle, on the person, or, or inside the body, unfortunately, in some circumstances. One of the lads had drugs secreted in his groin area. Oh, thank you very much. Number nine, follow me. Got five locked up in custody, large quantity of drugs recovered. Good job all around. Right, mate. All right, bud. Happy. Coming up. I've got some weed on me though, yeah. I can smell you've got some weed on you. Pete and the team hunt down more county line suspects. He's got two thousand pound cash on him. It's all your cash. Get it stopped, Adam. And in Harrogate. 
a nighttime sting swings into action. He's admitted he's got coke in the car so far. Oh, he's having a mare look. Lots of flushing going on. Near Skipton, North Yorkshire, Traffic Sergeant Pete Stringer is back on patrol. Most people are picking us straight away, which is no problem, it's slowing everybody down. But we still do get quite a few collisions on here. Come on, just one more. One more. That's all I want. Got anyone else here? Terrible. Just telling me the job. Sixteen forty. Near to Harrogate. Over. Big Mercedes. Looking at the intel, it looks as though it's been quite frequently from people's address in Leeds. The young man is taking residence there. So we've had some intelligence come in about a young man from West Yorkshire that's uh, been cuckooing or sort of basically grooming uh, an elderly person to benefit from living in their residence and using their car. That person is then supposed to be dealing drugs and is currently in the northeast area. We believe picking up a quantity of drugs to bring back to West Yorkshire. Yeah, it's literally just been sighted, so. Plan is to put some tactics in place that gives us the best chance of catching them with a quantity of drugs on. Not just BMD. Really? You couldn't write it, could you? Driving an unmarked car, Traffic Sergeant Tim Wilson is following the suspect Mercedes as it travels south. We're seeing an increasing pattern of drug supply that's travelling through the county. When we do get information, we do have a small amount of time to get in the right place. We're working as a team, so we've got people coming from all over the county to try and intercept that vehicle. 1-3 and 1674, did you monitor the request to make some progress? The uh, uh, debrief spot. Yep, yeah, on route from 1079. Traffic cop Chris Dory and two other units make their way to join Pete near the motorway. Do you want us a bit more hidden than this, or is it all right? It's fine, because by the time we're onto the roundabout, we're on them, aren't we? And the intel is that he goes up to the northeast a quick turn around and comes back again and then supplies in Leeds and Bradford. So you were front, weren't you, Rich? No, I'll go for, I mean, I'll be either way. I'm at the back. I'll be side, you go. Good. Right, cool. So hopefully it shouldn't be too much longer, really. So the vehicle's not too far away from us now. Tim is behind it in an unmarked vehicle, so hopefully uh, the occupants will be unaware that he's there. Those three here will get called out by the plane car, which is out of view at the moment, so when it commits on towards Harrogate, what we'll do is we'll come out at fair old speed and then get the box on as quick as we can and then get them searched under the Misuse of Drugs Act. We've got a drugs dog behind us as well, and as a, an extra contingency, we've got a stinger sight set up up ahead, so if it tries to get out or it fails to stop or anything, we'll get it stung further up the road and then still deal with it. Nothing is ever certain. You never know if a member of the public's going to get in the way. I don't know, an ambulance comes through on blues and twos and you just can't put the tactic on. We are poised. Well. Up ahead, Tim spots another car travelling with the suspect. You never know what you're going to dealt with, and that's the difficulty as a police officer. You don't know what they're capable of, and you don't know what risks they're willing to take to get away. There is the escorter that's been up to Cleveland as well. Sarah travelled a very similar journey, similar turnaround time. 
one three and sixteen seventy four. Do you want to go one in front to uh, try and take it off? Follow me, Don. Can you follow me for this one behind you, the Skoda? Yes, yes. You bring him alongside me. Rich, you take off the Merc with Chris. Stand by. I'll drop him behind the uh, convoy vehicle. Six seven four, two three cat the other one off. Dale, he's got it stopped on his own. Pete and Chris take the Mercedes into the services, while Tim stops the Skoda on the hard shoulder. I'll just search you, bud. I'll hopefully I get the car, I'll get home. It depends on what you're about here first, you don't know yet. Have I spread my legs? No, no, you're all right. Just take one shoe off at a time. Back to four. Is it just two of you in? You detained for the purpose of a search at the minute. Okay, I'll explain why in a second, but I'm just going to pop some handcuffs on you for now, all right? I've got some weed on me, though, yeah? I can smell you've got some weed on you. Do you have anything on you that you shouldn't have? Just a bit of weed. Bit of weed. Whereabouts is that? It's in here, is it? Yeah, yeah. Is this everything? Yeah, yeah. The grounds for the search are uh, intelligence-based, okay, and also the fact that your car stinks of weed, mate. And because of the movement of your vehicle, OK, at the minute, it's made a quick trip up north and come back south. Oh, we went to buy a car. Nothing else? No. Who's did all this cash? Mine, I went to go buy a car. Right. That was uh, the leftover from the car, 500 in that pocket. Yeah. Taking into yeah. the car. Where have you been to buy a car, then? Oh, middle somewhere near there. Bought that car over there, just got it taxed and everything. Well, uh, at the Skoda? Yeah, yeah. Right. The car the suspects claim to have just bought is also being searched. It's secreted within the vehicle are Kinder Egg containing several wraps of white powder. Yeah. Uh, he's got £2,000 cash on him. It's all your cash. It's going into his bag. I don't suspect a few weeks, possibly. Am I staying in cells? Oh, well, you'll be, you'll be put in a cell, yeah, until we know what's happening with you. Have you got anything on you, first of all? And nothing that I'm going to find of a, a police interest, no? no. OK, I'm just going to conduct a search on you, bud. Is there anything else in the car that shouldn't be there? Positive, we're not going to find anything that you shouldn't have. Nothing is found in the Mercedes. Are you known to the police have been arrested, caution or anything? You have. Are you on bail at the moment? So do you work for a living? You're a carer? The owner of the car, who was the front seat passenger, says they've been up to the northeast to buy a car. Which is the one that 674's got stopped, and he's got the remnants of his cash with him. That's what we've been given. Thank you. So a crime will get recorded to say that it's been caught with cannabis on you. I'll invite you to sign the warning form confirming your account and acceptance of the warning. When you sign your life away, I'll take the cuffs off. The driver of the Skoda is under arrest on suspicion of drug dealing and is being taken into custody. And this is a tactic that sometimes, you know, drug dealers use to send two cars. The one that we didn't know about, which is a Skoda, is the one with the drugs on. It's secreted in the panelling, a Kinder Egg containing what appears to be a white powder, which usually would be cocaine, but obviously we won't know until we test that. He's also got about £2,000 in cash as well. He's got a spare SIM card. So all these things suggest drug dealing. Right, the car is back to you. The other two men are now free to go. Till the next time. Clearly, I don't believe a word they've told me for a second, but they will come again, absolutely no doubt at all. But welcome to North Yorkshire. Coming up... Get it stopped, Adam. More intel leads to another arrest. And back at the station... Trust me, you are positive. The situation's not looking good for the suspect. Oh, he's having a mare look. Question. Oh. Who sang Turning Japanese? And for a bonus point, what was that song about? Been inside in a prison once or something. Negative. It's eight o'clock at night in Harrogate Town Centre. 
Traffic cop Sergeant Paul Cording is on alert for a drug suspect. Yeah, the vehicle is a black, check your X type. Yes, yes, current location. We've been asked by one of our departments just to try and locate a vehicle which is in town at the moment. It's in relation to the supply of controlled drugs. He was recently stopped, but he's on bail for that. Inspector Spence, Sergeant Cording, a very good evening. We've got four ops units doing a job in the Harrogate area at the moment. The chap is on bail. Yeah. I will probably look at strategically getting a stinger out as the first option should it fail to stop. Right, good. All right, boss, thank you. I'll take your location. Come in towards Adam, that's nearest you. Yes, yes. Traffic cop Adam Smith spots the suspect's car. Offside indication, Adam, if you can get forward. Still going for the stop. Get it stopped, Adam. Driver. Hello, mate. Hello. You, careful. Adam, confirm you got control of the vehicle, please. Eight on 50, in order. Got it stopped. Right, well, put handbrake on. Are you right, mate? Yeah, fine. Okay, yeah. fine. Speaking very quickly, my mate. Do you use drugs? Uh, no. Cannabis, really. cocaine. I only, only asked. Cannabis. Like, eh? Only cannabis. Okay, only please. cannabis. Yeah. When was the last time you had some cannabis, mate? Uh, a couple of days ago. Oh, okay. He has recently and is on bail. There is police intelligence linking him to the supply of drugs within the Harrogate area. Okay, I've got some information that's linking you to drug supply in the Harrogate area, mate. And if you want to bring him back for a Section 23 search... I'm going to detain you for a search on a Section 23, the Misuse of Drugs Act, nice. all right? Coke. There's a bag of Coke. Go ahead, male detained, Section 23, admits to Coke being in car. He's admitted he's got Coke in the car so far. Right, mate, do you want to step out for me? Yeah. Okay, you're a big lad. I don't want to fall out with you. Yeah, okay. Let's bring the car and him back. Mike, can you just take him straight off me, mate? I just need to secure yeah. what's in there. Yeah. He's been detained, section 23, good as gold. Yeah, yeah I'm glad that I'm, I'm literally just looking through the bag now that he's told me um, the coke's in. He's admitted under caution the stuff in the car, we just haven't found it yet. Gents, keys there. This is a vehicle that uh, Adam's just locked the driver up for, being concerned in the supply. Uh, when he's under caution, he's asked him if there's anything in the car, and he's said that he's got coke in the car, and he's pointed towards this bag, so I don't know if there's anything in that bag. Is this sh shopping, is it? Whilst Paul searches the car, Adam deals with the driver. OK, mate, so it has already detected cocaine in your system. So based on the result this has already given me, I'm going to further arrest you now at 2152 on suspicion of drug driving. Yeah. Small amount of white powder. Yeah. There we go. So far there's um, some white powder in his wallet and then there's a zip bag under the passenger seat which has got some more in so uh, that's what we've got so far. People find various places to hide things within vehicle. It could be within the cabin itself, could be in the engine bay, in the boot. Oh, he's having a mare look. As you've provided a positive preliminary drug test, now I'll pause there and I'll just show you this bit of paper. Okay? I don't have to show you, but I will. So, but don't show me. I oh, don't no, I don't, wanna, I don't have time to be courteous. Oh, don't be courteous, mate. I'm not bothered with it. Alright, mate, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, it's that's anyway, though. No, that's fine. That's fine. I can't read it, so what's the point? Fine. That's absolutely fine. But trust me, you are positive for coke. I will obviously get it 100% checked. Came across a, a bag of what I thought was white powder, but. It looks like it's uh, filler from, you know, to fill holes and cracks in buildings. There's a few uh, building bits of material in here, so um, I'm 99.99% sure, but you never know. Are we happy? Yeah. Yeah. So we've got two laptops, a couple of mobile phones, the two bags of white powder, one that was found in his wallet, and then the other one that was found um, underneath the passenger seat of the vehicle. It might only seem in the face of it like a small amount, but we're disrupting the supply of Class A drugs into the town. Was it hot chocolate or coffee? Hot chocolate. Hot chocolate, mate. I'll sort that now, no worries. 
Oh, it's one of the end twelve. So where's the gear then? <coughs> was it been built in already? I'm still trying to get them offloaded, but. That, that was in his wallet. Ultimately, we're traffic officers and our remit is to make the road safer for everybody. Now, this chap's obviously tested positive for uh, cocaine. So clearly got a complete disregard for road safety. It's still really frustrating that people think it's acceptable to take control of drugs, which are illegal, uh, and then get behind the wheel of a car because they affect your judgment. And I've been to far too many collisions, including fatal ones, where drugs have been the, the main reason why the collisions occurred. So the more and more drink and drug drivers that we can take off the road, the better. With 60% of all drugs from County Line's gangs transported by road, targeting the runners is a 24-hour operation. The public would be horrified if they knew what percentage of incidents that the police deal with on a, on a daily basis are linked to drugs, from road traffic collisions to burglaries to thefts from shops. It's huge, absolutely huge. The vast majority of crimes are related to, to drug misuse. It's, there's just no getting away from it. The message that people need to understand is that handing over the money to buy the cocaine or whatever drug that they're purchasing, through that chain, that money is then going in to fund criminal activity. All they're thinking about is, I'm here to have a good time. But that good time comes at a great expense to a lot of other people. It's been driving at speed on the wrong side of the carriageway. In this episode... Drive like an idiot. The convicted drug dealer who failed to stop on a motorbike in Harrogate... Approaching a red ATS, stand by. ..was sentenced to 18 months in prison and banned from the roads for three years for dangerous driving and driving whilst disqualified. Bring it down, bring it down. Stop, stop, stop. Open the door. Three out of the five men arrested on their way to a festival for suspected drug dealing... Do you have anything on you or in the vehicle that you shouldn't have? Oh, yeah. ..have been released without action. But one of them has been charged to court for possession and another is under investigation for possession with intent to supply. Hey, can you follow me for this one behind you, Escorder? Yes, yes. No action was taken against the men stopped in the Mercedes. You've got some weed on me, though, yeah? I can smell you've got some weed on you. But the scope is currently released under investigation for dealing cocaine. Get it stopped, Adam and the police are awaiting the results of blood tests on the Jaguar driver. Trust me, you are positive for code. If found guilty of drug driving twice in the space of a few weeks, he could be facing jail time and a lengthy driving ban. Oh, he's having a mare look. He's made a scene. He has got a thought for his smart cat. Vehicle stopped. Get out, get Give me your hands. On the floor now! North... Coming up, trucks under attack. We may have a heat source of interest. Stand by and I'll give you directions. Officers hunting down fuel thieves. Pull out now! Yeah, he's here. I'll send him in. <laughs> Organised criminals caught in the act. Right, you're under arrest for suspicion of theft of an HGV. And a dangerous high speed chase with a stolen car. This Dolph is driving extremely dangerously. Uh, they're reaching speeds of getting on to 100 miles an hour. Police emergency. Your vehicle's been stolen. OK, where from? Every year. Thefts from lorries and containers cost businesses £250 million. Pounds. The vehicle is currently headed into North Yorkshire's area. We've just been informed by West Yorkshire. So, what you've got here, you've got an absolutely ginormous distribution centre. So just look at all the lorries there, full of booty. Million and pounds worth of stock. In North Yorkshire, 
traffic cop Rich Clark is on patrol in an HGV crime hotspot near the M1. So a lot of the drivers will be parked in laybys and service stations on the periphery of this. We've had lots of assaulted blue drivers and drivers pulled from cabs and left at the side of the road where they've taken the, the truck and the trailer and everything. Also on shift is traffic cop Mark Patterson. We tend to actively target our patrols in, in the industrial estates that are, that are near to the motorway between North Yorkshire and West Yorkshire. It's a prime location for offenders to target. Where are you now? Uh, Tadcaster. An alert comes in about a truck, thought to be transporting stolen goods. Right, uh, there's a, an unregistered HGV that's just it 15 minutes ago. Right, where's it going, do we know? It's a HGV that's not traced PNC, uh, and uh, it's never been in North Yorkshire before. The, the plates aren't coming back to any vehicle, um, and it's heading into our area now. So it's most likely that this vehicle's coming in um, to target some other curtain side lorries, take the goods out of that lorry, fill that lorry up and disappear with it. Um, so we're just sort of heading towards the area. I to think a little bit like a burglar, because you've got to think, right, what are, the, what are the sort of sweet spots and the nice targets that they might be after next? John, have you um, pulled over to wait for us? A few miles away, traffic cop Mark is in an unmarked car searching industrial estates. Criminals using vehicles will try and escape those vehicles being linked to them, and they'll do things like put cloned plates onto the number plates that aren't the, the correct registration plate, because that way, if that vehicle is seen committing any offences, it can be hard for the police to then trace where that vehicle's from. 10-4, whereabouts are you now? On the left-hand side, I can see two HGVs parked up quite close together. What looks out of place to me is the fact that uh, one of the HGVs is facing the opposite direction to the other, and generally you would find that they would all be facing the same direction. Making a quick U-turn, Mark checks if the registrations match the wanted truck. The number plate on the front of the lorry is the one we're looking for. In the lay by the truck for the night. We found this truck. The bomb. They just round the corner. 1881 then. Um, looks like there's some people on just to the near side of uh, that vehicle. If I was a betting man, then what I would say I've stumbled across here is a organised criminal gang in the process of removing goods from one HGV into their HGV. Mark parks up to wait for backup. The last thing I want to do is walk around the corner and be faced with four or five or more criminals in, in the middle of stealing something and me being on my own before the rest of the team have made their way to be able to support me. Working in gangs are four minimum, and you'll probably have a getaway car, which will be probably high-powered. You'll have two or three lads skulking about, and if they see any activity from the police that might blow the whistle, they'll be onto the phones to each other. As Rich and Josh approach, a black Seat Leon speeds past. Well, that's just turned off. Looking followed by the suspect truck. It's unusual for a, a, a car to be entering an industrial estate in the middle of the night, so I think me driving into the industrial estate has now disturbed them, and they have then been, been on the phone to their getaway driver, if you like, who's in the, the black sail lay on. It's starting to bubble this job now, so... Agent 81, that vehicle, the vehicles are open. Follow him, see ya. That'll be the car. 
As we get to the entrance of the industrial estate, the car turns left and the lorry turns right. I've made the decision at this point that I'm going to turn right and follow the lorry. The rear door's still there, wide open. As Mark tails the truck, the rest of the team try and head off the Seat. Oh, They're behind us. Westbound. Hey, Josh, get out. With the suspected getaway car heading towards them, Rich prepares a stinger to puncture its tyres. Coming up, Mark closes in on the suspect truck. I've come up alongside and then pulled my vehicle across in front of the HDB. Rich and Josh catch up with the black Seat. Hey right, boys, you're all getting handcuffs put on you while we search you, right? And officers on a manhunt. I've got a feeling we've got a crossroad. The suspected fuel thieves. Put your hands out in front of you. This moment, Simon under arrest. Stopped, done it. Yeah. Vehicle stopped just short of us. 17 miles west of York, after disturbing a gang of suspected thieves targeting trucks on an industrial estate. What's crack, them boys? Traffic cop Rich Clark and Special Constable Josh Hill have stopped a suspected getaway car. Yep. Where are you from? Leeds. From Leeds. Yeah, mate. Got the water. Mm. Phone snapped. How's your phone snapped? Not mine. Been all the words down. Give up. Passing you. Sim cars have disappeared. Oh, look at that! Another one. These little phones that we found. They're what we call burner, uh, burner phones, and they've been snapped up in the cars. So, yeah, these, they'll, they'll just pick up for 10 quid, but they've clearly just snapped these up to, to hide whatever's on it. Um, they've had ample opportunity just before they've been stopped. They've known that there's traffic cars behind them, and uh, there'll probably be some interesting stuff on there. Two zero, can we have another unit with us, please? Yeah. Right, right boys, you're all getting handcuffs put on you while we search you, right? You're all getting searched under section one of pace, all right? You're only detained, you're not under arrest, all right? Just while we search you, just so we've got some control. And we're looking for stolen items or items that you're going to use to go nicking stuff, all right? While Rich and Josh search the four men, nearby, Traffic cop Mark Patterson pursues the truck suspected of transporting stolen goods. They turn to one that's pushed up to standby, it's a near side indication. It's left left toward the village. Up ahead are two colleagues, and what they've done is they've put two stingers out across the road. I'm approaching the junction now, we're standby. So as soon as I can see up ahead that the stingers are out across the road, I've put my blue lights on. I've come up alongside and then pulled my vehicle across in front of the HDV. Backup arrives to help Mark with the two suspects in the truck. Oh, you know, you're switching the back of my time, all right. Without reaching for out, have you got any idea on the night? Or I'll do you know, man. No. I'll watch that one, man. I'll we'll find that. Good lad, you get warmed up. What put your cell on? Both men are arrested on suspicion of stealing the HGV and using it to commit theft. Right, go on you. It's yeah. gonna hurt you, me. What's this in this pocket? Rich and Josh search for evidence on the men stopped in the Seat. 
So there's a number of things that we try and look for, try and place them to any offences that we suspect have been committed. Things like any sorts of gloves, ski masks. I, I can feel some of it, yeah. yeah it's money. Stand in the boot for me, just here. There's your belly. Yeah, I've got balaclava in my lad's pocket and a pair of black gloves. Four lads in there, all cool as you like, all playing there. Now, just out for a drive card, get all the details, run them through. Everyone known for vehicle thefts. With searches continuing, Mark heads back to the HGV that he suspects the men. Despite the, the, the lorry driver's best efforts, he's parked in a well-lit place uh, quite close to the security office um, for the industrial estates, and uh, he's been completely unaware until I've been, uh, been knocked on his door and woken him up. So what happens with curtain side theft is that the, the suspect will often make small holes uh, in the sides of the curtains and have a look at the load inside to see, one, whether there's something in there and, and two, whether it's going to be worth them stealing or not. So they make a larger hole that's big enough to get a person um, in uh, and then once they're in, they then systematically unload the, uh, the pallets um, and then pass them out to someone standing here and that's often why you get teams of three, four, five or, or more people doing these thefts. Only half a pallet of stocks missing from this lorry had they been um, left undetected. It's likely that a lot more stock would have gone from here. So we've got four boys from Leeds in the seat Leon. All four of them aggravated burglary. And then two locked up from the truck. In the truck, there's some property. And on the industrial estate, there's a truck being attacked, and it's the same property. So we can link the property from the truck to the truck. These four, we can connect them to that truck, so I'm bringing them in for that as well. All right, mate. So at this moment in time, you're under arrest for theft of a motor vehicle, going equipped to steal, and theft from a motor vehicle. All right. Equipped to steal? And yeah, theft from a equipped to steal, right. You've got a balaclava there. That's my grounds for your equipped to, to commit burglary or to quit to steal, all right. So you don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention one question, something which you let a line in court. Anything you do say may be given evidence. Do you yeah. understand that? Yeah, yeah. All right, mate. We'll be taking you to Harrogate Custody, and we'll get you booked in there. Right, you're under arrest for suspicion of theft. theft. Yeah. Theft from a curtain cider. Eh? Right. Well, you know it's gone, don't you? It's got some robbers in it. And uh, suspicion of theft of an HGV. Theft of an HGV? Yeah. You've all <laughs> Well, you know what's going on, don't you, mate? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> what's your head? Comes out, I'm happy it's come from you, all right. Yeah. What's your head? It seems like a, a well planned, well thought out operation. We've got two vehicles off the road, six people in custody, some stolen items recovered. So, all in all, it, it's a very good job. There's nothing better than catching a gang red-handed doing a job. Life's full of choices. Burglars, they've obviously made some wrong choices in their life and they think it's OK to go take property. Not having it, not on my watch. The gangs targeting trucks are not just interested in the goods on the back of lorries. Fuel theft is on increase. So at the minute in North Yorkshire, we tend to see criminals travelling quite long distances. Um, they'll use any type of vehicle that they can get hold of, load it up with um, drums and siphon equipment, and off they go. And they'll be looking for anywhere where there's HGVs parked. 20 plate. Not really a criminal's car of choice, that is yeah. it? 15 miles east of Leeds, traffic cops Gav Pearson and Martin Hayes are looking for a number of cars stolen overnight. Oh, 
not sure if they turned that corner or nipped off. A little bit quick, isn't it? Yeah. Just seeing this car coming towards us, I don't know if he's got a bit of a head of us or... Let's just pick... Just maybe just being a bit nippy through little side roads. Ah! Oh. Lagging it from this car. C Max. The C Max could be one of the stolen cars. Well, they've been coming to do this. Aside from that, it's full of diesel. You know, cutting through fields. Can't see him at the minute. I've got a feeling they've got a cross road. Gav radios through to West Yorkshire's control for help. 1224 from XN, we're just on your border. We've had a uh, two mac off from a vehicle up near A1. Um, we're just in your area, but they've gone to ground. It's hard to say where they've gone. It's just gone into absolute scrubland. At the abandoned car. And I just couldn't see which way they went, so I thought if I cut round, then I might be able to get them. Martin checks if it's on false plates. Yep, that's what I'm looking at. It's the stolen one. Is it one from last night? Yeah. Boom. Which is what I told her it would be. Yeah. We had a feeling it'd be out and about. It's just a matter of we've, we've dropped on it. Not a bit of luck, to be honest. Um, just on border between our area and West Yorkshire's area, so it's a good result. Bloody hell. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. 23 barrels um, and siphoning kit. So they've been coming out to just nick diesel tonight. Um, we had an inkling earlier on that this might be used for crime, and we kept his eye out for it, and then lo and behold, we dropped on it. With the, the massive rise in fuel prices at the moment, um, this is, it's always been a problem, a really big problem. Um, more and more fuel thefts, and uh, there's a sort of a growing black market for uh, cheap diesel. Local officers arrived to help search for the runaway suspects. It's two young lads. They've gone through these woods oh, that way, straight that yeah. way, so they've either gone straight across the road that way or cut down the field. Yeah. All right. As the hunt continues... Yeah, uh, we're just ...a police helicopter joins the search. Yeah, past three, two, go ahead. The runners came out of the white vehicle which is in front of our end marks and uh, north into the field directly in front of it and into the trees that are uh, between where the vehicle was abandoned and the A1. They went off to our off side towards the A1 into the into the trees. Please move to M-Pass. Can you give us some directions? Because I'm with the dog crew. We'll find him. Some trees on the right, and I think they're hiding in there. To the dog handler, walk behind you, turn around. There's a footpath just behind you. There's something warm in those trees. Right, come here, pal. Put your hands right in front of you. 
this moment in time, you're under arrest. You don't have to say anything, but it may have been if you don't mention one question, something which will later land. Or anything you do say may be given evidence. Yeah, that's three, two, can I confirm that there was just one person that was seen to come out of the <laughs> Negative, there were two, but the vehicle is set up for three at the minute because it's uh, rested its full up with drums. So it's set up for potentially three. We saw two on arrival. Yeah, past three, two, thank you. We'll have a look at the woods on the other side of the road then because that's where he came from. He ran across. That's one down. Looks like um, M-Pass has done brilliant. Alan. <laughs> That's all well done, I knew it was something. Uh, you're right, much appreciated, thank you, Ember. Same to yourself, thank you. So, a theft of motor vehicle and going equipped to steal, all right? So, I remind you, you're under caution. It's an absolute top result, this. We haven't had a pursuit and um, we stopped any further offences being committed tonight. The vehicle's getting recovered, it'll get forensically examined and we'll see what we can get out of it. When it looks at car, it's in, it's in pretty good nick, so they haven't even had it 24 hours, they haven't been able to ding it all up and it'll uh, go back to somebody uh, who's um, going to be missing it. And uh, it could be their little pride and joy, so, yeah, top result. Coming up... Officers are forced into a high-speed pursuit through the streets of York. The worst thing that could happen is that this person's reckless actions ends up wiping somebody out. And a million pound HGV hijack. Just straight down into that. Could be anywhere. Last year, HGV-related thefts cost businesses across the UK millions of pounds. We encounter quite a lot of HGV-involved theft, whether that be stealing from the back of curtain side lorries or stealing the fuel from the tanks. It's a uh, developing problem. Just outside York, PC Mike Rowan is responding to the latest report. Currently on the way up towards the village between York and Harrogate, uh, there's currently uh, flashlights which can be seen on the uh, on an industrial estate. Uh, we suspect that there's people on there who are trying to steal fuel. With the uh, the price of petrol at the moment, it wouldn't be that surprising, uh, as we are seeing a spate of fuel thefts at the minute. And it is a uh, it is a site which gets targeted quite a bit. We think they may still be on site. There's other officers there at the minute, so they've put a containment on, going to look at putting a dog in. If they are stealing fuel, then uh, I would expect that they'll be in a vehicle, uh, which is the reason why we're heading to the area. As Mike makes his way, there's news about a suspicious car in the area. So, firearms have uh, located a red courser just near to where the scene of where this uh, attempt theft has occurred. And so, we're just going to go and look for things which uh, might be used to steal. So, for fuel theft, we're looking for things like jerry cans, pipes uh, in the back. Uh, also, just seeing whether a car smells of fuel. It's high risk, high reward for the criminals involved in fuel theft. And it can be just as dangerous for us when we're tackling this kind of crime. There you go. They've got no issues in threatening officers with weapons if they are disturbed, just to get away. Hey, mate. This kid is the kid who's been on site. All oh, right. He used to work from until a week ago. Yeah. Uh, and he's come back tonight with a hammer. There's possibly some sort of dispute over wages. Has anything been taken from the site? No. 
No, just a civil trespass. Yeah. You have been on that site, Brian. Back. I won't be I haven't been at the Crown Marlow. I was on the site, yes. I haven't dropped in. Right, well, that's the situation you're at. You're under arrest for the burglary. You don't need a police station, then we'll arrest you. You don't have to say anything, but it may not be defense. You don't have to have something later on in court. You can do so many maybe give me evidence. You're going to your police station. We're going to see the items in your car for forensic examination, mostly in the gloves and the hat and everything like that. And we're going to find out exactly what's going on with how there's going to be an investigation now. We think he might have been on site doing something else other than stealing, possibly uh, causing a bit of damage. We don't know yet, that's unconfirmed. But uh, for the time being, he's going to be joining us uh, in custody, spending the night with us, uh, just until we can carry out some further inquiries in the morning. With the suspect on his way to custody, Mike and the team get back on patrol and soon spot another suspicious vehicle. We tend to find that uh, more people fail to stop for us on the night time. Night time seems to attract more criminals out onto the road. Just confirm it was the VW Golf. Yes, yes, affirmative. This Golf is driving extremely dangerously. Uh, they're reaching speeds of 80, 90, getting on to 100 miles an hour. And they're traveling through 30 mile per hour speed areas. This is very high risk, this is really dangerous. As well as the speed, they're also doing many other things. It's all over the road. They're turning the lights off. Uh, they're driving in the middle of a road, they're driving through red lights. The worst thing that could happen in this kind of situation is that this person's reckless actions ends up wiping somebody out. There's no new shooters, please. Monitor, the speed is 90, walking in the three zero zone, heading up into the national speed limit. This is medium. The vehicle is slowing in the bend, speed, that's 3-5. We have no idea who we are. You don't know whether they're armed in some way. So it can be quite an unnerving place to be, out in the darkness, in the middle of nowhere. Near the traveller site. To the left, left. Eight. Here it will be a decamp very shortly. Left, left. The lake, just the of the um, it's a lost loss. We haven't been able to follow. Four six five. I'm uh, at the entrance of the travel site now. Arriving seconds behind the firearms team, Mike and a dog unit join the hunt for the runaway driver. Yeah, that's the car there. We've got a containment on at the moment. Um, so we've got officers dotted all the way round here um, using thermal imaging as well. It's quite wide open land, so uh, if there is any visual, if anybody tries to break cover, uh, then hopefully we'll have them. We're currently at the side of the A64. We know that they've been through here because uh, the dogs tracked them this far, and we've also got footprints in the uh, in the soil. It's really boggy on the ground. Uh, it's quite difficult terrain to move across. We were on the opposite side of these pylons, that, that, that stretch of pylons, and then we've moved along there to the 
left-hand side of the pylons. And then that over there, I think, is the industrial estate. With miles of open space, it looks as if the runaways have escaped. As it stands at the moment, so far we've been unsuccessful. Despite our best efforts, unfortunately, the guys got away this time. So pretty much what's going to happen now is we're going to get the car recovered. This probably won't be the first time they've done something like this. Uh, they'll no doubt do it again. So. Uh, <laughs> We'll be uh, right here waiting for them. Uh, we'll come across them again, certainly. Coming up, a million pound HGV heist. We're gonna have to come out and cross this road at some point. Leads to a manhunt. They're gonna be desperate, they're gonna be scared. Sierra 1046. Uh, I am now behind the vehicle. Suspect to be stolen from yesterday. With HGVs a top target for organised gangs, traffic cops like Chris Story respond to truck-related thefts every day. They're often well prepared. They've done the research. They know what's going to be where. They know what stock they want uh, to steal. Let's get him passed off and let's get him followed at this stage. Crime is very lucrative for the, um, for the criminals that are choosing to do it. There's a lot of money in it, and that's what we're up against. Traffic officers are tracing down an HGV that was reported stolen nearby yesterday. It's gone right, 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 standby. It's going over the median, parked up. Got one out and running. Run out and run into late by a white male. There's climbing a fence to the wooded area next to the lay by. Give him a dog to us, please. Over there! They know that if they get caught, then obviously they're in a lot of bother, aren't they? So they are willing to take quite a lot of risk in terms of, of getting away. We may have a heat source of interest. We can. Uh, identify it as a person at this point, but it is a static heat source. Stand by and I'll give you directions. Probably about to your one o'clock, about seven metres, eight metres. Five, Bob. Get in. One big cake. The people that choose to commit these crimes generally operate on a night because the, that's when all the HGVs are parked up, the driver's often in the cab, obviously asleep, and they can operate kind of under the cover of darkness and often not be seen and certainly make it difficult for us to catch them. So that's a lot of the time when these crimes are committed and when we are obviously targeting our patrols. Yeah, we've just had a reliable sighting of the vehicle on the year one heading northbound. Chris is patrolling a service station near York on the A1. Go ahead. The initial call was a white trailer with all the goods in it. A report has come in from two junctions away. It's just gone through A1M northbound. Can you just pass me as much information we've got about the uh, vehicle, please? Move out of my way. That's showing on the APR as a white dash HGV. It appears to be a seven and a half summer vehicle. It's believed to have picked up a uh, trailer from uh, Sherman and Elvick that would have been an HGV size. Do we know what the trailer's displaying, or has it got anything on it? Unfortunately, not. Same white trailer. Um, we see you've got myself and 174 joining at 46. 
multiple units from across the county raced to search for the truck. It's a report of a stolen uh, trailer uh, with potentially a million pounds worth of sports stock in the back. There must be a lot of stock. Zulu Papa 25, we have potential contact. It's 12.24 towards Weatherby. Uh, Dick, come, Dick, there's some officers that have got behind it and um, the occupants of the vehicle have decamped and are running from the vehicle. So there's officers uh, on foot now chasing the uh, occupants of the vehicle. And John decamped through the passenger one of them wearing high boots. They went off across the field. The driver of HGV, they make the decision to pull the motorway. Um, and bring the vehicle to quite an abrupt stop and get out and do legs across the field. Traffic cops Joe Schramm and Toby Ganella arrive at the abandoned HGV. Just keeping an eye out, see if he's about, see if, see if we've got a torch in the boot. A torch. There's what threw me off, cos I've seen him bail out at the passenger side. Just straight down into that. Could be anywhere. We can't get the helicopter over because there's, there's somewhere, um, so they can't get to us. It's pitch black. Trying to get them in that kind of environment is difficult. Without resources like the uh, the helicopter and drones and things like that, we're a little bit on the back foot. Toby, we'll jump back in, car, mate. We're right next to the motorway now, so um, they're going to have to come out and cross this road at some point if they carry on from this direction. Finding them is really, really difficult without um, a helicopter. But they're going to be desperate, they're going to be scared because they've been stopped. We've got loads of cops in the area. Just going to give this car a tug to make sure it's not involved in, uh, in this whatsoever. Whenever things like this happen, we're just anything that's coming in and out of the area, we're um, running through as much as we can to try and uh, stop anybody coming picking these people up, basically, and taking them out of the area. Hello, mate, thanks for stopping. Um, there's been a bit of an incident in the area, and we're just stopping to make sure you've not picked anybody up or anything like that. Are you heading to work or something? You're heading from work. Yeah, yeah. What have you been doing? Uh, up at Junction 47, the roadworks. You've been doing roadworks? Yeah, yeah. Right, all right, OK, yeah, no problem. That's absolutely fine. Thanks for your time. No Take care, mate. With the trail going cold, Joe oversees the recovery of the lorry. The main thing is it's been stopped. No one's been injured, no one's been hurt. Got all the gear back. The initial reports was up to a million pounds worth of gear in the back of the. Uh, the trailer unit. I don't know how true that value is, but the trailer itself will be worth a hell of a lot of money without the, uh, the produce in the back. The tractor unit is going to get recovered, um, going to recover it for forensics. So although at this time we've not caught the suspects um, and they've disappeared into the night, we've got friends on anything that they've left inside that. So if they've smoked a cigarette in there and there's any cigarette butts, they've had a drink, anything like that, then we can um, look at getting the DNA off the, uh, off the items. And if they're on any of our systems, we'll be able to find them, get them linked to the job and get them locked up at a later date. Theft offences doesn't matter whether those victims are massive companies or whether it's an individual. Ultimately, there's always an impact, and that impact is felt by normal, innocent members of the public. We're all doing this job to catch baddies and to help people. What's down there? You might get one put away but there's somebody else straight into their shoes. I mean, the amount of flammable material to take in, leaking out of the bed, would just be a recipe for disaster, wouldn't it? It can be quite difficult to catch them in the act. We tackle it by patrolling these roads regularly. We spend a lot of time up and down these roads. We know them like the back of our hand. In this episode... Aside from that, it's full of diesel. 
Only one of the men seen running from a stolen car who was suspected of stealing fuel has been identified. Come here, Phil. Put your hands out in front of you. Right. He's currently released under investigation whilst the police further their inquiries. The runaway suspect who stole and abandoned a trailer with half a million pounds worth of goods has not yet been identified. Police are awaiting the results on forensics tests. A few days after a high-speed chase through York, Mike Rowan received a call about the VW Golf. The reported owner of this car has got in touch with us to say that the car's been stolen. It doesn't necessarily wash with me. Uh, I suspect that it may have been them in the car or maybe one of their associates. The fail-to-stop driver has yet to be identified. And in the case of the interrupted goods theft, a lorry search provides vital evidence. There you go. Commercial blend. The other truck left at the scene, it's got the exact same load, uh, but obviously with some missing. So that's crucial evidence, and it links them two together nicely. So number of plates, two sets. The two men arrested in the HGV. What's crack then, boys? And the four in the black car. All got interviewed, they all know the game. All no comment. Uh, have all been released under investigation under suspicion of theft. The truck driver also remains under suspicion of drug driving. And the traffic cops are back next Monday.